Tom here from Warren Systems. It is March 18th of 2021. And on March 15th of 2021, Jason Donefield posted this. This is in the WireGuard for FreeBSD development and part of the mailing list archive. And yes, it is a scathing review of the code that NetGate had sponsored to go into the FreeBSD kernel. And it is the code that is in the NetGate appliances, that is the PFSense Plus and PFSense CE 2.5. Now, this is all stuff I'll leave links to, and it's not good, as you may know. Uh, there's a lot of people that have been tagging me, asking for my thoughts on this, and I read it, and I did see, yeah, definitely Jason's very unhappy. Jason, the author of WireGuard, is not happy with the way that it was implemented, the way the code was written. He found a lot of flaws in it. Now, I did not know, and neither did really anyone else at the time, other than they seen the scathing review of the code, what exactly was wrong with the code. So I wanted to wait a couple days until there was some type of action item so I could share a more concise answer to what to do. I mean, a short answer is, yeah, sure, turn it off, but should you turn it off, where's the problem? And the first problem that was announced was a buffer overflow related to jumbo frames. Well, the internet doesn't run on jumbo frames. It's also a non-default condition for PFSense. So while I agree that's something that needs to be fixed, that didn't seem like a reason to stop using WireGuard. So I didn't do a video right away because I just reached out to people over uh, in different forums and asking, trying to figure out what's going on here. And then today we have the announcement over on the NetGate blog. Well, this announcement's about an hour old right now. And it's, we introduced kernel mode version of WireGuard in our most recent PFSense software releases, PFSense Plus 2102 and PFSense Community Edition software version 2.5. So if you've upgraded to 2.5, which has the WireGuard in there, they're essentially telling you that Jason Donefield and the review he's had of the code has unearthed some problems. Now, I still don't know the detail or full extent of those problems, but the action item, the takeaway for you is what NetGate says right here, don't use the project. This is officially from NetGate. And their exact quote is, with an abundance of caution, they have decided to suspend the WireGuard project within PFSense. Essentially what's going on here, and this is where I will also leave a link to the initial code review that's been out since last year, where there's a lot of discussion around how it was implemented. And there's a lot of discussion on what changes needed to be made to code. And this has been going on for several months. Then the announcement from uh, Jason here on March 15th. So there's a lot of uh, details that I'm not completely understanding, so to speak, because this started so long ago of public review back in 2020, and it came all the way till it was going to be merged into the main kernel in BSD, where the review really got scrutinized to the point of Jason going, no, this has really got some flaws in the code. And of course, he said so in a lot more words than that. And, you know, once people stir up a little bit of controversy, the controversy sometimes overtakes the underlying issues. And what I really wanted to focus on were, what are these underlying issues? Is there a security implementation in what should we do? And the answer is really simple right now. Don't use WireGuard. It's as simple as that. Uh, that's very unfortunate. It's a lot of people that put time and effort into this, but something went wrong. Something was not coded right. The details of which will probably come out later, but the action item I wanted to give to you, the audience, and people uh, in things we're doing ourselves internally is we're suspending any type of WireGuard deployments, any type of WireGuard implementations. Now, this is stuff we had on the roadmap. First goal was, of course, just getting everyone up to date on the PFSense and rolling it out to the new version that was released. But the WireGuard stuff was something, you know, we were looking at down the road. I did a couple of videos to show how it worked. And I know a lot of people, especially in the home lab market, were going to be some of the early adopters and testers because of privacy VPNs that offer it and integrating that with PFSense. Is that use case safe right now? I don't know. I do know that when a project says to stop using something, I will stop using it and we'll wait for further review. There's plenty of discussion going on. You can find it under forums like Reddit and things like that. And people sometimes wildly getting off topic and speculating, but I wanted to cover it from a security standpoint of do not use it. There's clearly something wrong. So that's the current answer when people ask, what are my thoughts or did I see this? And yes, I was aware. I do keep up with all of these things and I participate in the community. So I was aware of it when it came out, but I don't jump on it and make a video right away until I have something a little bit more concrete because I wanted to give something tangible other than, hey, look and read this. And, you know, that's obviously out there. People are aware of it, but I wanted to 
understand a little bit better what these security problems were. And we don't have a ton of details yet, but at least we have enough information to make that decision, which is unfortunate because I know a lot of people, myself included, uh, do like WireGuard and we're hoping for a bright and shiny future of it, but that's been put on hold. I have no insight into when this will be fixed, but hey, did I know of there was no widespread mass attack. So stopping something before a flaw can be exploited is much better than finding out on the other side of a bunch of exploited systems and finding out what the cause was. So I'm happy that they decided to pull it now. I'm obviously disappointed like many other people are about this entire event and entire sequence of events on there. Uh, we can wildly speculate things about later, but in the short term, the action item for you is to, if you're using WearGuard, don't use it. Uh, until further notice. It's really as simple as that. So turn off any implementations of it. Um, for us, it's not really much of an action thing. As I said, we're still rolling out the new updates to clients. It's on our roadmap, but nothing we really deployed. So it didn't require any internal action on our part other than, you know, do we have it in our lab internally, which I see as a pretty low risk um, in terms of use case right now. So I'll continue to poke at it and uh, we'll just have to wait for some updates and development. And as I said, I have no time frame on that. So today, like I said, is March 18th, 2021, and don't use WireGuard. That's all I got to say. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.